Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to the latest edition of the Mayor's Corner. I'm actually coming to you from Richdale today, right near Pete's Corner. Uh, Pete's Corner was dedicated last Monday during Yankee Homecoming uh, in honor of a new reporter that we lost uh, a couple years ago, uh, Pete Pollard, uh, super guy, um, just ultimate new reporter, and this was his perch right here. He was the mayor of State Street, and uh, we, uh, we'll show a picture, but we, we dedicated his his plaque in his corner uh, last Monday, and it was really nice, nice ceremony. Uh, happy August, everyone. I hope everyone had a great Yankee homecoming. Uh, I certainly did. I got out there to just about all the events that I could get to. Uh, the weather held up. We had a couple rain days, but nothing was uh, canceled, but really just a great week all the way through with the live music and the events. I know my family certainly enjoyed it, so I hope you, uh, you guys all did too. So there's just a couple things I wanna update you on, but, but before I say that, we're, we're, another reason why we're out here on the street today is because it's car show day here in Newburyport, right? So the Greater Newburyport Chamber of Commerce hosts their uh, annual car show. It's kind of like antique cars, old time cars. Here in Newburyport, there'll be over 200 cars down here on State Street and Pleasant Street, on Inn Street and on Market Square. And what's cool about this is like way back when, before urban renewal, you know, State Street was a two way street, not a one way street. So you'll get to see that today with old time cars lined up on both sides of the street. So I encourage you, it starts at five o'clock today, get down here and check out uh, the cars uh, while they're here. Cause it's just, it's a really cool event. It's one of the best events we do here in the city. So just some city stuff that I wanted to mention since I, you know, it's been, it's been a little over a week since uh, we, we've spoken. Uh, a lot of housing things going on right now, right? So the housing bond bill was signed by more, uh, our governor, Moore Healy this week. Uh, what's cool about that bill is like, it gives us a lot more tools to, to encourage housing development not only in the state, but here in New Report. And a half million dollars, so $500,000 was put into that bo uh, housing bond bill to help us with the Brown School development, right? So we're going through an RFP process right now. That's gonna close on August 15th. And then we've formed a, um, a mayoral advisory committee to look over the submissions. We're, we're thinking there'll be about five submissions for that plan. But this half million dollars will give us uh, some flexibility to work with that developer uh, to get a deal done there for some senior affordable housing there at Brown School. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the Port Plaza Kmart development, right? So we've been working back and forth uh, with the owner of Kmart and their attorney, uh, who's local, uh, former Mayor Lisa Mead. And we're working on the idea of a friendly 40B development there, right? They wanna uh, put some housing there. They would like some affordability component to it. And by going into a friendly 40B agreement, it would be something that we would do together, right? And that would be accompanied by a development agreement. So we're starting to work on that now. We're gonna to put together a draft development agreement. We're working on that right now, our city solicitor. And then I'm gonna bring in uh, the planning board uh, chair. I'm gonna bring in five city councilors to kind of take a look at that draft and give us some feedback on it. Then we'll go back and put together a, a final draft that we wanna send along to the developer. But it's just our way of trying to include some more people in this process. Uh, I really like the idea of a friendly 40B. We haven't done something like that in the city before. We're still trying to do a little bit of research on that, but to my knowledge, we haven't done something like that before. And you know, again, it, it could be a win for the developer and a win for the city. Uh, the win for us would be is that they would do 25% affordable housing uh, with this development, which would allow us to account for all the rental units and it'd be 100% rentals, so about 200 plus rental units on that space. And then we could count that towards that towards our overall stock of a, a house, a affordable housing in the city, which would push us above that 10% uh, threshold, which would give us safe harbor status for any other future uh, 40 Bs coming into the city, right? Because the thing with 40 Bs, right, again, this is a friendly one that we're doing together, but if it's an unfriendly one or just a regular 40 B, you know, a developer can come in here and bypass all of our zoning and planning board uh, protections and kind of just, it, it goes a different route, right? So I think this is a great, uh, great de development to do this with because it could help us down the road with other developments like you know, like a Waterfront West or any other developments in the city coming in, right? This could give us years of safe harbor status. So we're really excited that we're working through that process. Uh, speaking of Waterfront West, we're still doing uh, back and forth with uh, New England development around a term sheet. Uh, 
the discussions have been have been great. Uh, it's a little bit slow moving right now, and I think what, what's happening is inter interest rates are still high. So I think a lot of developers aren't aren't rushing to the table to get these uh, shovels in the ground. Uh, but we're having good conversations with them. We actually just had another meeting internally today with our lawyer around the term sheet. So we're going to continue to work on that. And again, we're just a reminder from that term sheet, right? Once we get close enough or we get to an agreement. From that, you should be able to pull a really solid legal development agreement, and then you should also be able to pull the zoning from there. And we're actually, again, we're working with Pierce Atwood. Uh, Dan Bailey is our attorney who's helping us with the, uh, who will be helping us with the de development agreement part of this, and he's also been helping us with the term sheet. And then we also have somebody coming in to work with the zoning piece, all right? So that process is still moving on. And again, there'll be a whole public process with this as well once we get a little bit further down the road. And then, so that all brings me to all this talk around housing. And I, again, coming out of the budget season, I really think this is the number one issue in Newburyport right now. We don't have enough housing to give seniors and others options here in Newburyport. We don't have the rentals we used to. We don't have the affordable housing that we should have here. And we don't have, you know, for someone who's maybe lived in their house all their lives, and again, the, their assessments keep going up, so their house has never been worth more. But if they want to stay in Newburyport, they can't sell because they have no place to go. So we're going to have a Newburyport Housing Forum on September 11th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the Senior Community Center. So there'll be more information coming out about that. But we thought this was a great time to kind of bring everybody together or anyone who's interested. We had a housing production plan that was, uh, we had a forum back in November, I believe, that was really well attended. So this will be a kind of a, a, a similar to that, whereas we'll talk about all aspects of housing in Newburyport, but we'll also launch that housing production plan that is just about finished uh, with all our work with uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. All right, so again, that's coming up September 11th, 7 p.m. at the Senior Community Center. Uh, one of the other projects that has moved forward past uh, an initial phase is um, the Plumber Spring Bridge, okay? That's been out of commission for many, many years now. So that's a border bridge that we have with West Newbury. So a couple weeks ago, the uh, City Council approved the intermunicipal agreement with West Newbury. So what that does, it doesn't lock us into anything yet, but it does say we're committed to moving on with the plan. And then from that, we will send out bid documents so we have a better idea if, if the cost is what we think it is. And the city council also put a cap on that cost. So going through this bid document phase and then getting some response uh, some from potential uh, contractors will, will, will help us move forward with that. But that's moving on. Right now, West Newbury's kind of driving that train as far as the procurement and the bid process. And then once the actual project is uh, on the books, then Newburyport will actually oversee the construction of that project. Uh, something that's been in the paper a lot lately is about security cameras. Uh, so I just want, I'm just waving to people out here, right? So uh, the security cameras thing, so it's interesting. So um, um, last year, you know, we had some kind of tense meetings and some tough interactions with the community in City Hall. So during one of my department head meetings, uh, it was brought up that, that people would feel a little bit more com comfortable if there was a little bit more security in City Hall and other city buildings, right? I mean, again, we have a, a lot of public buildings. We have our, our senior community center, we have the library, we have all of our schools, we have the harbor master office, we have uh, City Hall. So what can we do to make that a little bit more secure? So the plan that has already been approved by city council is what we're talking about, right? Because they wanna, they wanna tighten up the, the, the policy around having security cameras, right? Where they're gonna be placed, and then we want to get a, a, a really a great, a, a more focused idea about how many cameras are we talking about. And it's not just cameras, right? It's a pretty high price tag. It's over $200,000 we're talking about here. The, the, the schools just went through this process and we're working with the same company and their project was, was over $500,000. So right, th these are expensive, but it's not just about the cameras, it's about the security members' uh, me uh, measures to keep the, the building secure, right? And we're talking about like our key cards to get in, uh, any kind of access points into our building. So that's the bulk of the cost. The cameras themselves, of course, aren't that expensive. So it's more than just the cameras, but we seem to be talking about the cameras quite a bit. Uh, so that this all came out of a department head meeting with department heads, you know, talking about just, just wanting to work in a safe place and, and have you know, that other layer of protection about knowing who, who's coming in and out of our buildings. And then it also came from the city council because there was a couple of really tense city council meetings last year. And then, and then city council president Shan had talked about, you know, what else can we do to up the security in city hall? So that's kind of where all this came from. Uh, so we actually just sent out an email this week and we've got some good feedback about where actually we're gonna do the cameras. And most of them are 
are just uh, going to be on, not actually in offices, but more in hallways and doorways and things like that. So that's moving forward. Uh, and now the city council will take up actually the placement of those and what's that policy look like. And just finally, you know, our projects are moving right along. Fire station's still moving. So we're, we're talking about fall completion. The street works continuing. Lime Street is finishing up. We're taking on Johnson Street now. The goal is to have that done obviously before school starts. And then Lower Atkinson, if you haven't driven by the Pioneer League lately, drive by, the old playground's gone, the trees are gone there. We're gonna plant a, a, a ton of trees down there. We're gonna have a brand new safe parking uh, structure uh, configuration there. So that's gonna start this week. And again, again, a lot of things going on that are really, really great in your report. We're really lucky. We had a wonderful Yankee homecoming. Thank you again for all the volunteers, 100% volunteer organization. Thank you volunteers for making Yankee homecoming so special and really highlighting all the great things going on in the city. And if you can get downtown today, see the car show, over 200 old cards here in your report. It's like uh, going, turning back the clock to yesteryear. And I will see you all next time on the Mayor's Corner.